Whoa, look at those. We do love our tomatoes as a, as a nation. Uh, and uh, here in the school, where I am at the moment, the school garden, uh, during the summer holidays, attending to our bush tomatoes. And I'm uh, going to show you um, a few tips on how we grow bush tomatoes very successfully. Um, uh, and also how we overcome the problem of keeping them ripening as you go into the autumn and the colder weather. Let's have a look. Okay, so bush tomatoes. Bush tomatoes send up uh, lots of shoots um, uh, rather than just one shoot. Um, well, actually, most tomatoes will do that, but bush tomatoes, we allow them to develop, as you can see, lots of side shoots, um, whereas our, our cordon um, uh, tomatoes that we grow in the other greenhouse over there, we uh, we grow them and it's normally a kind of a, a single straight stem and we take out any side shoots. Um, but on these guys here, we kind of, we allow them to send out lots of side shoots, as you can see. I mean, look at them. Look, 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 look. They are, I would say, about eight foot high, something like that. At least eight foot high. Um, and uh, this is a variety that we've grown for a number of years uh, here in South Wales. It's one called Ambrosia which has these um, uh, kind of miniature, uh, like cherry, cherry plum tomatoes uh, and a lovely flavour on them. I'm, I'm kind of almost tempted to, um, to pick one, um, but uh, I like to leave them on a little bit longer, particularly at this time of the year. I'll, I'll explain why in a, in a moment. Uh, it helps actually for the to ripen some of the green tomatoes. But this particular variety, Ambrosia, um, we like to grow it because it does get so um, so big. Um, very strong growing, lots and lots of clusters of fruits. You can see there's more, more clusters coming here. Oh, look at them, oh, fantastic. And um, it tends to be a little bit later. It tends to fruit right through until um, November, which I think is maybe slightly peculiar to the um to the variety um but also what we do uh, the way that we grow it uh here so we grow it in really large pots there so those have got to be for oh, at least 100 liter that's probably about 100 liter that's probably more like a 120 130 liters uh there which provides them with enough um root volume and enough water um you know um to uh, support all that uh, all that growth one of the things that we do constantly at this time of the year is remove removing leaves um, um, and leaves there's one there we can take off uh, having obviously plants need some leaves to um, to photosynthesize and, and create energy um, to help it to grow but um, if you're not careful tomatoes can produce too much leaf and they actually lose moisture through the leaf as transpiration takes place they lose moisture through the leaf which means that they're going to demand more moisture from the the roots which means there's not so much moisture going to pump up those tomatoes so by reducing the number of leaves you've got you'll get more goodness going to form more tomatoes so that's you know a couple of the reasons why we why we remove the leaves i'm also on the lookout for any that might have any uh, damage on them or starting to go yellow or maybe any signs of any any insect um, damage at the moment thankfully most of these seem really healthy um, but sometimes you might see one with some holes in the leaves or um, some yellowing going on and we take we take that off um, I tend to leave some if they're catching direct sunlight I, I leave them but if they're in the shade like that one there I uh, remove them we have to use lots of bamboo canes and lots of bits of string to support these, um, uh, th this growth. And um, there is an argument at some point for removing the flowers. You can see there's a, a bunch of flowers just coming up there. Um, but I'm still let, letting the flowers come because, as I say, this particular variety will keep on fruiting uh, right through until 
November, maybe even December sometimes. Um, it's under a little bit of protection here. So it's not heated, it's quite, um, it's quite open. There's another, another tomato uh, in there as well. Um, so the, um, depending on how cold it gets um, through, through the autumn, and we tend to get quite mild autumns here in, in South Wales, um, this just c continues growing. Um, so lots of support, lots of volume of, of, of compost will help produce these bushy, bushy plants. Allow the side shoots to grow, take off some leaves. I'm going to continue in taking off some leaves so that we get as much light as possible to the, um, to the fruits. Then the challenge is, how do we get green fruits? How do we get green tomatoes to, um, to ripen? Well, as I said earlier on, I, I was kind of taught, and I believe this works to some measure at least, to leave some ripe tomatoes there um, for at least a few extra days because they will release, I think it's ethylene, um, which helps other tomatoes to ripen. So I've heard some people, and I've tried it myself, talk about leaving a ripe banana or a ripening banana or a ripe um, apple um, on the soil surface because they produce lots of ethylene and when there's ethylene around, that helps um, turn the, the, um, the green tomatoes uh, red. And you can see that, you know, that's, that's the first one there to ripen and his mates nearby, to some measure, uh, may have been encouraged to ripen because the, of the ethylene that was being produced there um so i'm going to leave that a little bit a uh, little bit longer as i say, you, you can put bananas or uh, apples other fruit there maybe even a fig in fact we grow figs here so maybe that's an option um but i what can happen is if those those fruits get too ripe uh they can uh attract insects and things which we don't particularly want so just don't let those um if you're going to use some other fruits there don't let them once you see them starting to rot I would put them over in the compost out the way. Otherwise, you know, that can, that can bring um, additional problems. The other thing that we, uh, that we do is we keep on feeding with a high potash um, tomato feed. Um, in fact, I think I'll go and get some of that just now and show you how to do it. Here we are then. So we've got our fertilizer. I'm using um, uh, this fertilizer here this year. Um, Fostrogen, uh, which is made in Wales, and seeing as we're living in Wales, by you know, um, Tidy, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, use our, our favourite Welsh fertiliser here, which is of course high in potash, and the instructions there tell me that we use um, one. Did you hear that seagull just then? Don't they know I'm filming? Um, <laughs> so the instructions tell us to use one scoop for every four uh, to four and a half liters of water. I've got a very hooped, uh, no, it's not hooped, it's heaped um, scoop full there because this is six, uh, six liters, you can see there. So we're just gonna drop that into the top. Lovely. And then we get a, a purpose-built, um, specifically designed stirrer uh, here and give that a good old stir. It might take about a minute for this to um, fully dissolve in the other way. It's important that you get it thoroughly um, dissolved. I can still see some in the bottom there. Um, otherwise, the bottom of the, the can will have fertilizer that's a bit too strong in it. Um, because of course you can you can overfeed, you can damage plants by giving them too much fertilizer. So if it's too concentrated, um, there we go. So then having stirred it, we're gonna give that soil a good old drenching so that the nutrients are taken up by the roots and for his mate there as well. has been said that actually as the um, autumn progresses and uh, you're trying to get green tomatoes to, to ripen, allowing the compost to go a little bit drier 
can sometimes help uh, help the, the plant to focus on ripening. I think if you keep the compost really, really wet, it's going to keep on trying to grow leaves. Um, so as we go through the autumn, we're going to go... Um, uh, we're going to kind of rem remove more and more of the leaves um, to allow more and more of that reduced light level that we get in the autumn to get through to the fruits. We're going to try and stop the plant putting on new growth. We'll probably pinch out the, um, the tops of the, um, of the stems there um, and uh, try and get all the attention, all the nutrients, all the water, all the light to go to these bad boys so that um, we can start picking them. Any day now, mate. I'm going to web you. So there we go. Um, there's our bush tomatoes growing like Billy hair. Um, and um, big pots, lots of compost, lots of high potash fertilizer. We use slow release fertilizer in there at the start of the season, um, and the, the slow release high potash granules. Uh, and then we use a liquid feed um, as you go in towards the autumn, like what I just did. And um, take off the leaves. Enjoy them when you eat them. Hope that helps. If you've got any other tips or tricks, things that you use to help ripe, ripen the tomatoes, um, if you're growing bush tomatoes or you're, 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 you're thinking about it and you want to ask some questions, uh, please, please, please use the, um, the comment section on, on YouTube. You could even like and subscribe. Um, why not? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for watching.